You're listening to Middle East Radio Forum on 960 The Patriot. Questions are welcome at Radio Forum at AOL.com. That's Radio Forum at AOL.com. Now your host for the Middle East Radio Forum, Mayor Jolovitz. Hi, welcome back. This is the, unfortunately, the shortest segment uh, of the broadcast today. It's only seven minutes long, so we're going to rush. After the next commercial break, uh, it's the longest segment, and I'll go into detail uh, with the uh, political bio of our guest. Our guest uh, today, right now, from Jerusalem, Dr. Melissa Jane Kronfeld. Um, thank you for joining us, Melissa. It's great to be on again with you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kronfeld, our time is limited. The stakes are quite high, so let me just jump in. Yesterday, we saw another horrific terror attack in Israel, in Kirat Alba. Another murder, and others injured. Um, some have called this another intifada, which the media uh, refuses to recognize, this time with guns instead of rocks. For those who didn't see what happened uh, on the news, can you describe very briefly uh, and the subsequent impact that this might have in the election less than two days away, please? Sure. So um, for my friends uh, and family in Israel and our media in Israel, excuse me if I get a, a small detail or two wrong here, but my understanding, having stayed up all night long watching the media and getting alerts on the Telegram and WhatsApp news channels, which are um, kind of the way we get news here in Israel, is a, um, a terrorist pulled up near or by a supermarket um, in Kirat Arba, um, uh, right near, uh, right outside Hebron, where Itamar Ben Gavir and uh, great Ben Gopstein, among other great leaders of Israel, live. Um, and he opened fire. Um, unfortunately, there was a 50 or so year old father with his 19 year old son shopping in the store. Apparently, news reports the father was killed um, on on site, um, although he was rushed to the hospital. I'm sure they did everything in their power to save his life. His son was injured. Um, as is the case with all of these terror attacks, the heroism of Israelis shines through. Um, and to well-known uh, community members um, in Hebron who have been uh, known to um, rescue people in the past, um, jumped in um, to, to deal with this situation. Um, uh, uh, not to be too gruesome to your audience, but we do live in Israel, and the reality can be sometimes be stark. Um, apparently, according to news reports and video, which is out there, uh, in order to neutralize, which is the word we use here in Israel um, for terminate a terrorist, in order to neutralize a terrorist, they hit him with a car, um, uh, which was the most effective and easiest way to stop him from killing more Jews. Um, and I'm not sure if and he was fired upon, but um, certainly uh, your your audience, if they're uh, wanting to, can go um, watch that on online. Um, I, I, in the process of saving um, the rest of the community, one of those people was injured, shot pretty badly. He's gone through surgery, and we've heard that he's making a speedy recovery. The father was buried today, um, but that just wasn't the end of it. A few hours later, uh, three or four hours later, more shots were fired in a checkpoint near Kira Arba. Um, because uh, the uh, Arab Palestinian terrorists just can't get enough of Jewish blood. You know, it fuels it fuels their system. It's it's what it's what keeps them going. It's what keeps uh, uh, Palestine free. Um, and then later that night, there were reports that there were car burning, bur- burnings in Jerusalem. And then, unfortunately, slightly off topic but uh, relevant nonetheless, this, uh, today there was a car ramming um, up by Jericho, I believe it was, and five uh, IDF soldiers, five brave. Uh, men and or women, I'm not sure if they've released the names, uh, were were injured uh, in a car running attack because no matter what the left will tell you, cars and rocks can kill. And you know that they have never been hit with one or had a stone thrown to their head if they'll tell you, oh, it's just a car. Oh, mm-hmm. it's just a stone. Um, right. So that's what's going on here today. Of course, uh, a lot of people may have seen in the media that, that immediately the assumption was, um, I think, on all ends because of the proximity in Mars house, uh, in Mar Ben-Gavir's house, uh, the Knesset member um, who's now rerunning to be the third largest party in Israel, that um, he might have been the intended target. Thank God, Baruch Hashem, he was not. His family is safe and sound, were kept inside. Itamar was fortunately not at home at the time, because as soon as Shabbat ends, that tireless, relentless, fearless leader of ours was already out the door campaigning um, and already already somewhere uh, preparing to lead our people um, into a new government and a brighter future. We do have a commercial break that comes in two minutes, but let me throw this in. We'll pick up the discussion after, of course. It's been said that, God forbid, uh, if a terror attack would strike Israel right before an election, the right wing, 
uh, Itamar mm -hmm. Ben-Gvir and your efforts mm -hmm. certainly represent that political ideology that the right wing would benefit. A tragic thing. Uh, uh, you've aligned yourself with Itamar, uh, with Itamar Ben-Gvir, his campaign. Um, some people don't know the difference between Otsmat Yehudi and the campaign that, uh, and the party. The, uh, by the way, for those of you out there who don't know, Otsmat Yehudi means Jewish strength. Now, Itamar is running also, um, he's running as the Religious Zionism Party. Can you clarify the symbiotic link between those two quickly, please? Very quickly, for sure. So Itamar ben Gavir is already a Haver Knesset, and he um, is the chairman of Otsma Yehudit, which is the political party. He is aligned because we have a coalition parliamentary system where parties have to con come together to create a mandate to rule the government. It's not a two-party system. He's aligned with the religious Zionist group, which is run by Bethel Smotrich, who has been a minister of Knesset and now is a Haber Knesset again. Um, this alliance um, is is essentially exactly like um, you, you, you described in, call, in the, telling your audience what Osama Yehudi means and what religious Zionism is. This is the party of religious Zionist Jewish strength. It is that simple. And the unity of these parties in conjunction with hopefully a food um, coalition and some other smaller right um, and religious factions will ensure that we will not have to live in this mishigast that we've been living in over the past five years. We will no longer have to tolerate a government filled with terrorists who believe that, that the people who killed Jews should be praised um, and that a Palestinian state should come at the cost um, of the Jewish state. I apologize. We do have the commercial break uh, coming up. For those few out there who don't know what Mishagas means, it's the madness that today prevails with Israel's present leftist, weak coalition government. That will change, we hope, on Tuesday. A commercial break. We'll be right back. We didn't have time in the previous segment. I'll do this very quickly. We've had our guest before, and I trust we shall again. Dr. Melissa Jane Kronfeld is a journalist, former university lecturer focused on foreign policy, national security, Israel, and American politics as it relates to the Middle East. Uh, she's been a featured speaker at conferences all over the world, including the United Nations, the White House, and Capitol Hill, and in a variety, too many to name, television, print, radio, podcasts, and other online uh, media outlets. Dr. Kronfeld is the founder of Passions for Peace, excuse me, Passions for Purpose, a social impact consulting agency with offices in New York and Tel Aviv. Uh, these past few months, Dr. Kronfeld has been one of the consultants to Itmar Ben Gvir, the political personality who was seen as the pivotal player in the elections in Israel in two days. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us, Melissa. Uh, there's a brief, I mentioned it earlier, there's a brief 90-second uh, uh, audio that I want the audience to hear because it plays to everything that uh, we represent. Listen, please. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine. Imagine what will happen if a right-wing government is established, one that really represents the opinion of the majority of the people. Imagine the legal system returning to the values of true justice with a balance between elected officials and the High Court of Justice. Imagine a great settlement drive throughout Judea and Samaria with a dramatic reduction in housing prices because there will be supply and not only demand. Imagine a defense minister who bolsters the settlement movement and doesn't host the enemy leader in his home and doesn't abandon Area C for the establishment of a Palestinian state. Imagine governance returning to the mixed cities, to the Negev and Galilee, without crime, shooting in the streets, drug trafficking, and protection. Imagine the assertion of resolute force crushing terrorism, a government that doesn't encourage the Arab dream to destroy Israel through withdrawals and concessions. Imagine a government that serves all of its citizens, but whose components are all Zionist, a government that neither begs of the support of the Arab voice nor is dependent on it. Imagine a government that is proud of Judaism and proud of the Israeli flag and proudly applies sovereignty in the entire land. Open your eyes. Stop dreaming. Encourage your friends and relatives to leave their homes and vote for the parties that have raised the banner of sovereignty in the land of Israel. Beautifully crafted. Well said. Uh, Dr. Kronfeld, Melissa, uh, your comments about uh, why uh, Itamar ben Gvir. Why religious Zionism? Why Otsma Yehudit? Hello, Melissa? 
We lost. I apologize. Oh. I was. I was. Nope. Nope. I'm here. Okay. I was keeping myself on mute because, um, okay. unfortunately, as those of you who have worked on uh, worked on campaigns or have been a candidate or a volunteer in a campaign know that we succumb to a disease that's unique uh, to campaigns, and it's called exhaustion. Okay. And I am in the final stages, uh, and that includes co- a little bit of a cough. Um, and I was just muted myself. Well, we need, um, we need you to speak <laughs> and for the enemy to be muted. So tell us, why you Tamar ben Absolutely. It's funny. I was saying I've been asked that question so many times um, this past week uh, and past few months. Um, and, and I always stop to pause to think about what my answer is. And then I realize that I don't need to think about what my answer is because my answer has been the same since I was first. Um, attracted to the whole movement that was building around Itamar Ben Gavir, which was which was quite a while ago, long before before we were here. Now I was following him and watching him, um, and it really, for me, it boils down to two very fundamental things, and that is Zionism and Judaism. We are a democratic state. We will always be a democratic state, but we cannot forget the unique value and character of the Israeli state, and that is founded on two fundamental principles and that is Zionism and our faith, our Judaism. And there is only one person, there is, well, there's really only one party, and I believe that there's only one person in that party that truly represents and is willing to put himself on the line for these fundamental, critical, underpinning, foundational principles upon which the Israeli state, the Jewish state, the Jewish people, the Jewish nation, and Judaism itself will not survive. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who talk about post-Zionism. There's no such thing as post-Zionism. But Zionism is the realization of the Jewish state for the Jewish people. And with half of the Jewish people overseas, we haven't realized that dream yet. We still need to fight for that. And there's so much of our people that have been lost to Reform Judaism, Conservative Judaism, all of which I am, I, you know, I grew up Reform, so I'm proud of all Jews, no matter where they come from. But we have lost so much of our core fundamental principles, um, and, we, and our practice, and, and there's only one man out there. There's only one person out there who's reminding us how critical and how important it is to be a Zionist and a Jew first, above and beyond all things. And it is these two critical things that we need to bring back into our politics, our culture, our society, our life, for the rest of the pieces to, to fall into place that we you know, not to get all holy, but like God, God gave us a plan, you know, and if we believe that we should do before we know, and we believe that this horror is perfect, and we believe that we were chosen, then we just have to take that leap of faith and say, you know, there are leaders for times and places, uh, and, and the fact that Edomar ben Gavir espouses these two fundamental principles, which I believe are the most critical to ensuring all our other needs, uh, you know, then, then you know, Itamar ben Kavir is our man. Let me illustrate that need. Uh, in fact, I'm going to rely on a story that happened two weeks ago in Israel. Uh, there's an enemy, and, and many people don't want to admit it, but there's an enemy that lives within. Uh, a story that appeared on October 16, two weeks ago, when an IDF soldier um, uh, was, was murdered, and the IDF was in pursuit of the terrorist. Here's the story very quickly, and I'll ask you to comment. The headline was, Shofat Arabs find creative way to help terrorists. Young Arabs from the Shofat neighborhood in Jerusalem shave their heads to make searching for the checkpoint terrorists more difficult. Story, young Arabs in the Shofat neighborhood have shaved their heads to make it difficult for the Israeli security forces to locate the terrorists. Why? He had a shaved head, and they all shaved their heads in order to uh, somehow foil the IDF. These are people living in Israel. Mind you, these are residents of Shofat, which carry Israel, and they do carry Jerusalem identity cards, which grants them the same privileges and rights as regular Israelis. Um, we've more accurately described them before as Israel's fifth column. Could you, uh, I mean, Itamar ben Gvir certainly understands that. Um, and with the polls showing, uh, especially in the last 10 days, a tremendous uh, uh, growth in uh, support and popularity for the party. Would you please uh, speak to that? Absolutely. You know, what's important to remember is that Itamar ben Gavir is not anti-Arab. Okay, there are Israeli Arabs that live here. They are citizens of the state. They were born here. Many of them are contributing members and critical members of our country. He's anti-Jihad. He's not anti-Arab. He's anti-Jihad. And if you are an Arab that lives in Israel and carries an Israeli identity card and you are also a jihadist, 
well, Buddha, you, you know, I, I, I am full, I'm fully with Inamar with the belief that you should be arrested, that we should maybe perhaps be reinstilling uh, capital punishment, and that, or maybe revoking your citizenship rights. I mean, and remove the Arab-Israeli conflict from the conversation and put this in the context of America, right? If an immigrant, um, um, a migrant, an illegal alien, whatever, however you want to call it, crosses into the country and murders uh, a mother uh, of two in her car with her baby while pregnant, what are, what are the Americans going to say? Oh, we should give him three hots and a cot. We should give money to his family back home. We should allow him to live in our cushy prison system and, and have him be, you know, um, applauded and, 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 and praised and, and you know, uh, held up as a, as, a, as a saint and a martyr in, in his gangland country. No, they would never tolerate that. They would say, execute that guy, or they would say, send him back home. But in Israel, those, the, you know, the, 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 it's, not, it's not the same. You know, immediately, automatically, it's, Oh, the, the poor Arab. Oh, the poor Palestinian. Oh, the poor Bedouin. Like, why, why, it's Israel's fault that that person went out and killed a Jew. It's just, it's outrageous, you know? And I'll bring it even closer, closer to home for you than an example two weeks ago. Um, and my friend Yoav, um, pointed this out, um, today, um, that, that a couple of weeks ago, um, a Jordanian, um, Sheikh, uh, Imam, I don't remember exactly which one it was, uh, came, he was a religious leader of sorts. He came to Hebron to kind of uh, play a peace role, I guess, between two clans that are fighting in Hebron. And he apparently said, it has been reported, that he apparently said, why are you killing each other when, and just going to hell when you could be killing Jews and going to heaven? Mm-hmm. And it is a member of one of those clans that was responsible for the terrorist attack last night. Yeah. So we don't even need to go back two weeks. And more importantly, you know, one of the things I was, I was kind of shocked, I was sitting in an interview with a reporter, and the reporter asked, asked Itamar, what's more important, uh, the, the, the issue of Arab terrorism within Israel or Iran? And, and Itamar rightfully said the issue of Arab terrorism in Israel, because each and every single day we are being car rammed and, and rocks thrown at us and people driven off the roads and people being stabbed and people being chased through Jerusalem or people being shot and killed in Hebron. And the, the, the journalist from America, from an American outlet, was outraged. He was shocked. He was, he, he was mortified. I, he asked the question two more times. What do you mean that Iran's not a bigger deal? Okay, yeah, if Iran fires a nuclear weapon at us and wipes Israel off the map, well, you know, there's really not much I'm going to be able to do about that, right? And I'd like to think that the Israeli Defense Forces are doing a darn good job operating wherever they are, inside and along the border of Iran, trying to take care of that, whether it's assassinating terrorists or putting Trojan horses in their, in their, tech, in their nuclear technology. But you know what, what, what worried me every single day when I walked to the post office? or I go storm the Temple Mount, or I'm out on my house um, on the Etam in Afra in Gush Etzion, which I was today, uh, having a bunch of Palestinian boys standing, you know, 100 meters from me shouting and screaming at me as I was simply cleaning the windows of my little house. You know, that's what worries me each and every single day. I'm not going to be able to prevent an Iranian nuclear we, weapon. But we, Idemar ben Gavir is going to be able to prevent the rise of jihadism in this country, this fifth column that is becoming a serious threat, and the Fatada that has absolutely 100% been launched by Hamas, the Lion's Den, and his associated groups across this country that is threatening and endangering not just Jewish citizens and Israeli citizens, but Christians, Muslims, Arabs, Taurus, and any single other person that wants to live, visit, or come to this holy, beautiful, gorgeous country, which is a light among the nations, with Idmar ben Gavir back in office in a ministerial position, we'll be able to live that dream. Dr. Kornfeld. Uh, we've only got three minutes before the show ends. I have to have also my closing comment. Um, sure. I will say this. Uh, the example you give is a good one about the fact that if an uh, illegal immigrant or some immigrant in the United States would do that, uh, I mean, we know. And in Israel, it's actually in Israel, it's much, much worse. Because in America, when an illegal immigrant commits some kind of crime, you don't have fireworks being, you know, um, the other immigrants aren't throwing fireworks into the sky and passing out candies in celebration of the murder. In Israel, they do. It's a much, much more severe thing. Anyhow, last question. Uh, you'll have a minute to answer, and I thank you once again and, uh, and wish you well in the election a day and a half. If the right-wing bloc fails to establish a coalition, it means that Lapid continues as prime minister and further concessions to Israel's declared enemies continue. What would that portend? Why, once again, last moment, Itamar ben Gvir? Well, one, I think that we shouldn't count on necessarily Lapid um, if we can't form a right-wing government, Lapid necessarily being the one that gets to the top. Gantz is still, uh, still a threat and he's still out there. 
Um, and he's a he's a weak need um, liberal, and he's proven himself as such um, in the past. Um, listen, we have lived through. I've lived here for five years, um, almost six, and in these five years, I have seen politics at its basis and most revolting. And that is because during a large part of that time, the right was losing power and the left was steadily gaining it. And the reason why we are in the situation we are in today, the reason why Jews are dying in the streets, the reason why I am fearful to go to the Temple Mount some morning, the reason why a, a father was killed in front of his son yesterday is because Gantz, Lapid, Merav, and the rest of the, you know, the left here in Israel are sitting back on their high horses, enjoying the power that they were given by Natalie, um, Natali Bennett's betrayal of the Jewish people by signing a document and an agreement that led a government which allowed Arab terrorists in our government. And it is time we put a stop to that. And I tell your listening audience out there that is Israeli, if you are not here, fly home right now. Get on a flight, fly home, vote test. If you are in Israel, get up Tuesday morning as early as you can, vote tet, and then go find five people, make sure they get to a poll. Ask your elderly neighbor if they need help getting to a poll. Ask the family with 10 kids who lives next door to you if, they, if you need to watch their kids so they can get to the polls. And whatever you do, if you are not Israeli, you call each and every single person that you know who is, and you say, you heard me tonight say that the future of Israel depends on one thing, that you vote tet on Tuesday. I am depending on your listening audience and depending on Israelis. And I, because I know in the bottom of my heart that I can depend on Edomar Ben Gavir. Thank you so much. The word that she was using was tet, the Hebrew word on the ballot. Oh, sorry. Of <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, no, not at all. Uh, point, point, <laughs> the, tet, the tet offensive. We're ready to yes, do it. <laughs> yes, the point uh, and points well taken. Uh, Dr. Melissa Jane Kronfeld, once again, thank you for joining us. And hopefully we'll have you in the coming weeks in which we can celebrate uh, a change in Israeli politics. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. I look forward to waking up on Wednesday morning knowing that Itamar Ben-Gadir is a minister of Knesset, not just a Heber Knesset. Thank you so much.